Hi, this is Pastor Mark Winkler again from Emmaus Lutheran Church in Orange City, Florida, and we're here in our home in Deland, Florida, and this is Dory, if you haven't met her. And um, a couple of things that are different for this week. Um, first of all, the sermon isn't going to be uploaded, but you will have um, a link to click on, and it will take you to a sermon by um, Presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. And um, she has a message for us for Trinity Sunday. It's a message about uh, relationship, that God wants to have a relationship with us. It's a good sermon and very appropriate, especially in light of the um, coronavirus and the lockdowns and the, um, the changes that we've been going through. And also um, just in, um, in recent days here, all of the... Um, the protests and the backlash since the uh, death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. And um, uh, she makes comment on that, and it's um, very good, very timely for us to hear that message. So she'll be delivering the sermon for this week instead of me next week, next Sunday. We're not going to record a sermon early. We've recorded sometimes on Thursday or Friday and then post it by Saturday. And next week we're going to actually invite anybody who's interested in coming to the church at um, Emmaus. We're going to, it will be a parking lot um, recording of just the sermon. It's not going to be a full worship service. Um, I think you'll hear some brief announcements. We'll pray and then record the sermon. And I think we're driving away in 20 minutes, and um, so it's not a whole service. Uh, you'll be sitting in your cars. People aren't going to get out of their cars, and um, so you're welcome to come. We're, we're going to try it. I'm probably going to preach. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to be preaching from the back of my truck. I don't know. And we've got loudspeakers, and you can sit in your own vehicles with windows cracked open um, so you can hear the speakers, but also to remain cool. This is going to be at 9 o'clock Sunday morning, um, a week from tomorrow, which will be June 14th, 9 a.m. And um, you're welcome to come and be a part of that. We'll kind of evaluate afterward and see what we're going to do after that. Right now, we don't have um, a date in mind for regathering in the church. And so we'll just kind of wait and see how that goes. Our preschool is reopening um, this coming Monday, which is June 8th, and they're under a whole different set of guidelines than we are as the church. And um, so they are going to be reopening. Um, so that's what's going on there. We do have one confirmed positive case of coronavirus in our congregation. So it's kind of been a, a little slap of reality for us that we um, kind of weren't expecting at this time. I guess that probably would be have to be true for everybody who's had the coronavirus or known somebody who has had it. And so our prayers are with, I'm not sure the person wants me to say their name, so I'm not going to, but we'll, be, we'll keep um, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus in our prayers. And um, then I, I also want to share that, you know, we're every single week, um, year round, we celebrate Christ crucified and risen. We give you, we give thanks to God for giving to us that gift of forgiveness of our sins and for the, the gift of renewal of life, the promise of life everlasting. And we claim that gift of life everlasting for Vera Woods, who passed away this week. And um, a longtime member of our congregation, many of you knew her well. And um, there won't be any kind of a memorial service until around Christmas time. So we'll let people know um, when plans are made and, and um, so you'll be able to make your plans. Uh, would you join me in a word of prayer? Holy and precious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life. Life is precious. Life is definitely a gift that we give you thanks for. It's a, a gift that we know is sacred and we hold it to be sacred. And we ask God that 
all those who are suffering with illness and those who are struggling with um, the results of racism and hatred in the world and in their own lives and their personal lives. We pray that you would comfort them and give them hope and strength in, the, in, in humanity because not all of humanity is mean and hateful and, um, and prejudiced in that way. We ask God that where there is prejudice and that you would break open hard and cold hearts and help them to see in each person around them the value of relationship that we have with each other. We ask God that you would give us hearts and minds that are welcoming and open and loving and kind, all the things that are necessary for living together peaceably in the world today. We pray for those who have died from um, violence. We pray for those who have um, suffered humiliation from, uh, from uh, personal pain because of racism and violence in the world. We pray for those who have lost um, their businesses from violence due to um, uprisings and due to protest protestations and, and things that have gotten out of hand. We ask God that you would, um, would bring peace to us, that you would bring hope to us. And we ask God that as we give thanks for the gift of life, that we also now give thanks for the gift of everlasting life. We give you thanks for Vera Woods and for, um, for everything about her that was good and kind and faithful and, and interesting. If you knew Vera, you know that she could talk about anything. And, and we give you thanks, God, that you have put people like Vera in our lives. We pray for those who are wondering and wandering in their lives, help each person to see a clear path unto you. We pray for ourselves, for our relationships, for our church, for our church member who has the coronavirus um, te positive test. And we, and we ask God that as we make our plans to regather as a worshiping community, that you would bless us in every way. All of these things we lift up to you as we call upon your holy name through your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power and the presence of, and love of your Holy Spirit. These things we lift up to you. Amen.